On behalf of the fish tank, we are not financial advisors. What you do with your money is entirely up to you. This is simply speculation and our own opinions on the subject matter at hand. Please invest wisely. Welcome back to the fish tank, everyone. On today's episode, we are joined by Zilbrad, who has a lot of experience with changing the core content of his YouTube channel. From Counter-Strike to Overwatch to Sea of Thieves to Apex Legends and throwing in other games into the mix, Zilbrad has only seen success and growth. However, recently, he has taken a step back from producing daily YouTube videos and now wants to bring awareness to the topic of business, specifically mostly on GameStop stock or GME. I find it interesting how you introduce this to your YouTube audience who are used to gaming content. You said the world is tumbling down with a recession on the way, climate change Wait, severely. I, I am going back to Apex. Like, there's a new season coming. Is oh, that we're okay. going to talk yeah. about the whole, oh. the whole, the whole, the whole, we're just going to talk about Apex? C continue, continue. Something. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, that that's good if you're going to, uh, if you're <laughs> returning and not just ditching it entirely, I guess. Um, there's a whole new game mode for Apex here, coming salty. out. It looks I'm, I'm, cool. tr I'm truthful. You're going to have the facts. I didn't know that a new Apex season was coming. I'm sorry. Um, climate change, where was I? Uh, Yes, basically you're talking about um, climate change, a recession on the way, and market manipulation, uh, and you said that this can all be avoided, and that you have hosted streams and classes online to educate your viewers on the matter. You also messaged me recently saying that GameStop made announcements recently, and we are here mm -hmm. to hear about it. Yeah. Brad, welcome to the podcast. What an amazing podcast. I am just so welcome here. <laughs> Why did that you sound so sarcastic? <laughs> what the hell? We want to have you here. We're all friends Why does here? it look like you're stuck in your room, too? I, like I, you were but... staring at the camera like you're a lost soul trapped inside of a room. I, I am. This is terrifying. It feels like I got a gun to my head. <laughs> you're all the way in Australia, Brad. You're perfectly safe. We have been asking Brad to be on for a while, so. Uh, scary times, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Brad, just think about it this way. We, I've, I've been in your videos. You've been in my videos. This isn't any different. Every, every single I've time been in a video. In my video, I then um, <laughs> take a break because I'm like, so, I can't take it. Like, you know, salty is that, that stressful. Stress. <laughs> Our video was so good. The one with me, Brad, and Fish that he took a two-month break after he posted that video. Just like the one of two months. This just will like sustain them. As well. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't know what it twice is. Now. Is that just a coincidence or did you just realize? He gets so stressed out when he's talking to us that he can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's he gets to put on an American accent. That's what it is. In the video where me, Brad, and Fish were playing together, he pretended to be American. It took everything out of him, man. It was way too much. <laughs> where do you even want to begin with this thing? I, you want to keep it yeah. condensed so that way your audience that doesn't understand can actually understand? <laughs> well, yeah. I guess the, the first thing I did want to bring up um, is, I guess, an introduction to your classes and teaching methods. Because we actually, the Brad and I actually uploaded a TikTok to um, kind of talking yeah. about attention span on the platform. It did not do well at all, which is kind of ironic because we're talking about how attention spans are bad. Attention what now? The, the lectures just is just like the live stream. I was just practicing for a live stream on YouTube and then I saw a lot of people not understanding so I'm just like... Yeah, let's start from like, what are, what are you teaching? How do you teach it? It's just the live stream. I, Where? I was just literally just practicing for the live stream. That's it. Yeah, but I mean, what's the live stream? You know, like... Uh, the live stream was um, showing the entirety of like the old system versus the new system. One of uh, using code to actually have authentic and accountability. That is a beautiful word compared to the old system, which relies on human error and entirely corrupt. Okay, so let's I, start there then. Where, why do you think GME is going to be this big pivotal part of humanity? What exactly is it that you're trying to teach these people about GME? Because before all people knew was that it was a stock that people could go against yeah. hedge funds and they got money out of it. Why is it so important now that you bring it up and you're teaching these classes about it? What makes GME so special in your eyes? Or in the eyes of many people. Where well, to begin with that? You got the mathematics side, and then you've got like the social side as well. Where do you want to begin? Let's start with what a stock is to begin with. Just what the company was, because before GameStop was just the place you went to go yeah. get video brick and games mortar, before Steam. A brick and yeah. mortar store where you would go get video games or trade them in. Like yep. a really, truly a dead company. <laughs> yeah. Very. Yeah, and then it had a major so turnaround with um because of some. Ryan Cohen, who was the who is the uh, chairman now of GameStop, who made a huge pivotal pivotal uh, transformation to the e-commerce section and everything, and now delving into the NFT side of things on a large scale, because you've seen the valuation of things like OpenSea 
uh, and we've seen <laughs> them admit that like 80% of their stuff is like what is OpenSea? OpenSea is another NFT well. marketplace. Well, like, yeah, eighty percent of their stuff was like bad. <laughs> it isn't the bad right. shit that you already know of. The, sure, um, it's the, pe- the the main reason people don't like the word NFT yeah, being like, tossed around, besides it being associated with art theft and et cetera, et cetera. Just like PNGs and yeah, people yeah, because that's art the um, and... uh, we're in a uh, what's the word? It's the infantile stage of the technology. It's like um, starting with Pong and just everyone shitting on Pong, the video game, the first video game, and be like, this is terrible. Mm. NFT with the picture was the first thing of it, the application of it. Uh, a shitty application, granted, but it was the first and necessary for everything else because NFTs are just digital ownership. Focusing on the digital ownership part of what an NFT is, it has nothing to do with the fact that it's picture related. We're focusing on the fact yeah. that if you own something that's an NFT, uh, according to the blockchain, which all crypto is based off of this open source, uh, easily held accountable because it marks everyone and holds everyone like to a certain like uh everyone can what's see the word it. For? yeah you can see everything that everyone does what they sell what they own it's all right there plain and simple you can track the history of everything so you're so, trying to say that something about gme and nft coming together to meet this uh pivotal point in history essentially which is what you're trying yeah, to so basically spread to uh people. gamestop is under the uh, attack of shorts short sellers they make it short they create fake shares out of thin air to drive the stock down. But every time they create one of these uh, new shares, people, they have to buy it back eventually, thus causing a short squeeze that we've never seen ever before because it is the most shorted stock in history where they can hide the numbers of what the true short interest is. So we don't know what's the true short interest, which is um, uh, just a mathematical calculation. We'll just say that we don't know how many fake shares are out there, right? So sure. that is the old system where it relies on human error, and the new system that relies on code will actually know if when stocks become NFTs will actually have no corruption. Because it'll be less like impossible to fake a stock, which is what these which is what these stocks are. You wouldn't be able about. to do what is currently happening with the fraudulent okay. stock market. With um the application. And what's of currently NFTs. happening. Yeah, what's currently Naked happening. Short is selling all that. It's causing like what's, cancer uh, what's in... research delay and uh I remember you said it brought the downfall yeah. of Blockbuster and just companies like that. They destroy. It. Well, Blockbuster uh, was going to die either way, just from wasn't. just from just from like the way the, no. the market <laughs> so they, works. They were under know? financial stress due to getting targeted by the media and short sellers, so they could not do a pivot. No, they weren't keeping the up with stress. the with the the future. They weren't doing like what Netflix was doing was do you completely know what destroying with, them. Uh, GameStop, the exact same situation, except they had the likes of the shareholders actually bring the company back from its death so that way they could actually pivot and change their they were just thing. betting against it has nothing to do exactly with the company how to change the thing if they had the funds and support of the shareholders what is different about gamestop today i'm not talking about the stock i'm not talking about anything gamestop the company now versus gamestop the company even five years ago nothing it is still a brick and mortar shop where you go and get uh video games Sure, Why can, is uh, it so valid? Same day delivery at the moment so far with um, GameStop in America. You can so I can have download a game off of Steam in instant. Some why would I? Why would I want to uh, get from a physical store? And if you're wondering about the Steam stuff, that is what they are currently creating. Yeah, NFTs on a new thing. So games as NFTs. Once you're done with a video game, you can sell it. Unlike on Steam. <laughs> when it, once you're done with the game, you have to keep it. Or, you know, you buy a skin in Apex, an heirloom that costs so much money, but you have to keep it, you know? You can't sell it after you're done with. They are going to make digital ownership for these things, so you'll have your own property for games. Like, but this isn't, like, an unheard of thing. Like, this has been done already for years with, like, Counter-Strike or... That's a great example. Uh, so, like uh, we got CSGO. Yeah, PUBG, even. With their, um... Knives. CSGO knives. Once you're done with it, right? You sell the knife. And you can get some money. I did it. You I sold. Keep that I had money on Steam. You can't get well, it you out can take it off. unless you do weird ass ways. But with NFTs, you'll be able to do whatever you want with it. And if the company goes down or there's this and that, you can still do it. You can still integrate. I agree it with you that the the technology is amazing, and the future is going to be crazy with games and cryptocurrencies and stuff like that. I just don't know why GME specifically has anything to do with that future. Because, because I think it. that the 
the but they're not though. The, this technology has been around, and then GME is now just now teaming up with somebody to make NFTs. Not just like now. with uh, what. But what, you, what, already, uh, what has GME on... done specifically? Can... Behind the scenes, they are very secretive. Otherwise, they give away their plan to the opposition or, you know, the hedge funds trying to kill their company. So they have been extremely secretive about it. And you can only speculate until the real thing comes out. To be 100% confirmed this year, finally, the other day, an announcement confirmed to be this year. All right. So I mean... let me ask you this then. So we just kind of get back on the track here for people that are... Going yep, to be definitely. a little confused about things. Hey, look, a let's bottle. let's let's talk about uh, how this all started. Where it started with putting GME to a place where uh, it could be in this position because it was a dying company essentially, right? And it was getting targeted by hedge funds so that way they could short the stock and then ruin the company while making a profit. How exactly does that happen? Let's talk about that first. The killing of companies. <clears throat> yeah, how does a hedge fund go about killing a company like G- like uh, GameStop, where they so first see a company is in a bad position and then they, they eventually have, push it out? Like cheats in a video game in terms of the stock market, they're able to just control the price. I guess I'm just confused about like how it affects the price because like I like I said, I'm pretending to be someone that's like completely okay, ignorant okay. of this. So like when so you have, I guess normal I market mechanics would be. Um, no, I'm trying to think of an absolute layman's way to bring it down. Uh, so in normal market mechanics, it'd be like, that is going for $150. I'll buy that. The next person, now the price will be $200. But with this, they're, they're shorting it. So they go, oh, I'm going to sell at $150. Now the next price is at 120 They keep bringing the price down by selling to these people. <laughs> well, what I'm trying to do right now is just try and like get us to the point where we can start the <clears throat> podcast from what would be a coherent train of thought going forward, along with all the banter that we've had so far. So, like, I, I, when someone is brand new to to the stocks or whatever, you have to like ease them into it and give them a general idea of how things work. Especially because half of our audience is like people that don't deal with stocks like at all. So you have to say like, all right, so here's what I'm bringing to the table. This is GME. It's the company that, for some reason, you you know it only as the company you go when you were like twelve to pick up an Xbox game for sixty bucks and trade it back for five. Like that's what the company. Surely wants. that explanation is good enough for everyone. Currently. No, it's not. That's the thing, Brad. Like, and you can when you start, explain that part. I I they don't want to hear me explain it. They want to hear what for you For this part, that you, can e- you can easily explain it. I, listen, I'm not an expert on this, like, at all. Like, I watch your videos and stuff, and I've, I've looked at the stuff, but it goes in one ear and out the other. I can, uh, it's, it's can, fine. Should I give, like, a short explanation of it? Or... Sure. I mean, if, Whichever if, if makes it most coherent. It to, yeah, like, I, I, for some I mean, reason, I, I can't bring it down in lower levels. <laughs> when a, yeah, when a person buys a stock and they have a long-term investment in it, it usually means that they buy it at a certain price and they're waiting for it to go up so that they can sell it and they make the difference. You okay. Understand? And then when you're Whatever. shorting a stock, you're selling a stock at a specific price and expecting it to go down so that you can buy it there and then cover the difference and you make money. It's it's a similar thing. It's just the opposite. Gotcha. I, okay. I said, I said that. <laughs> Understand always, that. always assume that whoever is listening to you when you're teaching any subject has no ability to know what the oh. subject is about in any capacity, because that's the easiest way for you to come off as very readable to a very broad audience, especially if you want to give critical information that's at a higher level than what the base of someone would know. Because most people just know if you buy a stock, you wait for it to go up, then you sell it and you make the money. People don't know that you can do the opposite, where you can wait for a stock to plummet because you're shorting it, and then you make the difference in between. That's, that's the big thing there. And then you want to say, like, okay, so GameStop was a company that only sold games. They were dying because they were going out of business because they had shitty business practices for the most part, where you, they, you just sold a game back to them for $3, they sold it to you for 40 and then you're just like, all right, well, what the hell? And now GameStop is basically worth, like, $130 a share or something, whatever it is right now, and it's way more than what it was, like, a couple months ago because there was this big thing on the news where hedge funds – were caught short squeezing this company by a very large group of redditors and suddenly this price skyrocketed and that was known to the general public as a short squeeze what you're saying brad is that that wasn't just a squeeze that was the very tip of the iceberg why is that happening then i was uh, commonly referred to a meme to as a sneeze but that was just purely buying pressure to bring it up to that price okay and the hedge and- funds were the ones applying this pressure 
No. That was okay. retail actually doing that price. And I know I said uh, retail has something like 5% effect. Well, that, that was how popular it was back then. Everyone was buying it, thus bringing okay. the price up and actually screwing a few shorts back then. But Then the most legal thing happened in history, and no one has been held accountable for this to this day. A year later is mm -hmm. where they removed the buy button on the stock and then naked shorted the stock down. Yeah, Remove that was the when they closed down Robin Hood. Yeah, yeah. So that's the Robin Hood issue, gotcha. But it was also a majority of brokers. A majority of brokers also removed the buy button. So the SEC said that even while the you know the buy button was removed and the price started going down, so that people could sell off the stocks that were skyrocketing, the hedge funds especially. Especially, so the they're still in a short essentially because there's just so many they're stocks out there. They didn't. They didn't actually buy back to cover the difference. They didn't close I mean, out I read, I read that a lot of the hedge funds had their they, their shorts covered. Covered. And that, I that's think correct. one of them that, actually that, no, no, went right out of there, right there. That's the key word. Covered. Covered is different yeah, to that means that they're And out, they though. use that jargon <laughs> to play with your mind. Because covered is no way the same as closed. Closed is when you actually close your position and then you're not in the stock anymore. Covered is when you cover the interest to hold these short positions. But, like, what's the number? What's the number of what? Well, yeah, like, where... Uh, are we talking, like, $1,000 a share? Or <laughs> what are we talking about? Millions, honestly. That's uh, millions. Sure it's, yeah, it's uh, it's like kind of hard to grasp. So that's why. I... Would we just get rid of like U.S. dollars and just use GME as, you know, I go to the groceries? It's, and it's a possibility. If you want to talk about the actual effects of all this when this happens, yeah, it's yeah. uh hyperinflation. Hyperinflation, yeah, because it's... then they would have to print so much money to cover a, a million dollar share, which has never happened before. Um, you're already heading to hyperinflation, by the way, without this. This is just a symptom of this current system we live in. Because there has been so much debt piled up ever since 2008, even before then. And it has gone out of control. You know how they, uh, with 2008, uh, that mm -hmm. crash happened because of the housing market, essentially. The debt of the housing. Now we've also got, not only that, again, and everything else, we've also got student debt. So all your student debt, you guys is being played with and gambled with. So what are some other yeah. ways that we are headed in that direction besides this? Currently, inflation is at 7%, and that's mm -hmm. the new number that they... The, the real inflation would be way higher than that. And it doesn't look like it's going down. They keep making a joke, going, it's transitory, but it's not. And then they go, oh, wait, maybe it's not transitory. It just keeps rising. It's going to eventually come back down and be all fine. Everything's fine. They make all these words. They say everything's fine. Don't mm. look at that. Go back to your job and struggle where you can um, get hardly any money when, you know, your parents could, like, work and get a house and support kids. But nowadays, when you work way harder than your own parents and productivity, you get nothing <laughs> in comparison. It's, you know, uh... Mm, because uh, the entire system is built to... Is working correctly. It's it's built to make the richer richer and the poor poorer. And you can how see how is that, that not the same with crypto? I mean, I feel like crypto and NFTs have just made the rich richer like big time, and it's almost just the same thing just uh, in its infancy. And uh, it's like even less regulation. I've seen so many like rug pulls, pump and dumps. I've seen kids like lose all of their money because they saw some face clan dude fucking saying, "Oh, you should buy Moon Rocket coin." I, think I and got a then... good comparison. So, look at all the currencies we have in the world before crypto. Sure. How many of those got rugged pulled? A lot. Hyperinflation. So, then you're in. saying it's just the same corruption. You're, no, you're kind no, of like... I'm just trying to make some type of comparison. I'm not. I'm not so, uh, these yeah, I... uh, countries can print as much money as they want. A lot of those shit coins that you're looking at can do the exact same thing. That is why the only one that I'm really looking at is Ethereum Loopring. I don't care about any other cryptos. Those are the only ones. I'm you said Ethereum about. loop ring. Ethereum and loop ring. Loop ring's built on top of yeah. Ethereum, using the Ethereum ecosystem. So I only you don't like Bitcoin about. Uh, I am not knowledgeable about Bitcoin. I'm only for Ethereum. So there's that. But yeah, it's completely different to every other system that we know of. I know with um with topics like this. I mean, even Louis showing uh some hesitancy towards this all. I know that's something that you we actually talked about before was uh when you talk about NFTs in general. 
Like, you'll say that if, if it gets brought up on Twitter or something, people will just immediately back out and be like, oh, NFTs, I don't want to associate with that. And then I look How into... How to trigger Twitter. And the, yeah, and then, and then I'll look into the responses NFTs. of people... Yeah, exactly. I'll look into responses of people saying, why are NFTs bad? And it's literally the same general answer. They don't have, like, any, yeah. for the most part, backup to it, which is just like... Um, it kills ah. the environment. And then someone will be like, how? And then they just say it's energy <laughs> being consumed. So do you want to go into like, uh, maybe- Wait, there's, there's a funny thing. So basically the GameStop uh, principal engineer. Yeah. <laughs> it's memeing this so hard that he has, someone made a um, NFT collection uh, called like basically NFT bad. And it's got NFTs, a Ponzi scheme, environmentals, yeah. uh, this and that. And every time he sees something, he just replies with a NFT saying, and if he's a scam environmental, even though his whole entire job is to work on it, so he's just memeing at the people that don't understand it. Because they can understand, yes, a lot of bad ones that are getting shown, but never see the light shown on the actual good stuff. I wonder why. Because it completely threatens the old system. What's course, the good stuff? The yeah. good stuff is what I'm mentioning. Ethereum, Loopring, and GameStop. That's the major, like the biggest one that will happen. I don't think anybody has a problem with Ethereum or like... Uh crypto that's why i said ethereum and uh, loopering and gamestop but i think like, we're talking more about like specific like nfts because Ethereum's ethereum is not an nft it's a cryptocurrency yeah. you know the nfts just use ethereum to transfer yeah, ownership so the, uh, nfts that gamestop will be making the current ones exactly will be we don't even know what they are i'm talking about like right now like what what right now it's some um, what is great. good about nfts now nothing that's what i was saying before it was um the infantile stage of the technology, just like Pong. Do you think you can play Pong for ages? <laughs> no. So people are kind of right. You know, like, NFTs are kind of fucking dumb right now. Yeah, and just imagine if they had that for Pong and just, like, cancelling all those video games and stuff like that. Essentially, every single technological revolution is met with a lot of people going, no. What do you think the future looks like? What 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 exactly do you think GME or, you know, all of these oh, yeah. people that are working on the second wave of NFTs, what is that going to look like? What, why is that going to be cooler or better or even fucking useful compared to what we have now? Well, firstly, I believe that they'll be also not only with the gaming NFTs, so that way you have ownership of your own skins or games. <laughs> But also, what I mentioned with um, the stock NFT, so therefore that will remove naked shorts and it will have an actual accountable stock market that isn't fraudulent. What, what's a gaming that? NFT look like? So... Just be, besides, like, you owning a skin? Because I feel like that's already... Uh, the best one is just um, owning a game and then you can, after you're done with the game, you can sell it. Just like with uh, physical games, you know how you go to the GameStop and you sell the game after you're done with yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. For, like, pennies that on would digitally, the game. You can do. For every game that will be made or whatever. But actual NFT So you think there's going to be, like, a market of games? Yeah, so once you're done with a game, you can sell it, yeah. What was our last uh, very viral <laughs> topic Steam, for Steam, I guess. Right? No, 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 as in uh, genre. Genre for gaming, sorry. Battle Royale. Uh, Battle, Battle Royale. Royale. Battle Royale. That's, yeah. that's it. And we haven't had any innovation or progress since. The next innovation is actually then play just, to earn the... video games. Or, like, no, just blockchain games, essentially. That's also why we're actually seeing Microsoft buying up all these companies to get ready for this because yeah we actually talked NFT. about that on a past podcast they want to the uh, them buying blizzard was like a big step or the guy was saying was uh the ceo of whoever did the buy of uh blizzard was saying that th this is a huge step into web 3 and we're gonna see a lot of cool like and do you know what microsoft with... is partnered with partner with gamestop gotcha yeah. For those of you that creating? for those of you that aren't watching at home, Zilbred is showing us his GameStop shirt. I I guess <laughs> at this point with uh, we've talked about a lot of stuff that like like two bolts that I'm sure some people have no idea yeah, let's uh, get some what a lot salty of things talking. Mean. He doesn't no, know what to say. No, no, I was I was gonna move on to the next thing, which is just like um I feel like in a lot of your videos you kind of conclude by saying how much or excuse me, people do your research and then you consider research like you you and Louie brought this up before we started the podcast, but um. You said you get your information, a lot of it, from Reddit. Uh, uh, it would be called Super Stonks, right? That's the, no, the subreddit. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I guess, could you go into more specifically, like, what, am I just going to understand if I visit the Reddit? What should I be looking for? Um, so if you... And also, why is my information, like, not as valuable? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first, I gotta know exactly where your information 
was from, but I'm mostly just, with Film Salty. No, no, that's like it's from I just videos. look at videos the same way like you produce videos about it. Okay, other who, like just regular people talking who about, about the, it. the history. I don't know exactly. I'm gonna be honest with you. So with um Reddit, you can get DD. That's mentioned. That's due diligence, and there's a whole hive mind peer-reviewed comments. Do you not think that there's a bias on Reddit? Like a huge echo chamber of people just saying the same thing. That's that's one meme, by the way. Confirmation bias, where we keep getting proven right. By yourselves. Do you not see anything wrong with that, or? No, no, no. As in, they keep getting proven right with the um actions of the marketplace and how all these stuff is happening. So, do you ever find yourself disagreeing with anything that gets thrown in that community? Of course, and then uh, a lot of people also disagree as well. And then sometimes you disagree with it, and then yeah, it doesn't happen. Like they go, oh. <laughs> Uh, a specific thing is going to happen on this day and the stuff is going to rise. It doesn't happen, so that's obviously where I was disagreeing. So I mean, I've been I've been noticing that GameStop has been going down like as far as stock price. What if what if by chance before the mother of all sort squeezes that you're talking about, like what if all of the companies where they had their short positions, what if that's met like because it keeps going down and they get to sell all of their stocks or buy all, back all of their stocks for uh, the best As the price, price goes down, it's easier to lock the float and DRS the whole entire float. There's only, like, supposed to be, I don't know, we'll just say 50 million shares that are supposed to be locked up by DRS, making your shares into real shares. As the price goes down, you're able to buy more. Do you think that $102 is an accurate representation of what GameStop is as a company? No. We haven't seen uh, actual price discovery in any, like, actual proper price discovery in any stock for, like, the history of the stock market. What has GameStop done as a company? Besides have, just in, announcing things. They have hired an incredible amount of talent. They have expanded their businesses with um, distribution centers, I believe. Um, they have constantly gone more and more into the e-commerce side of things, so you can order a lot of things online from GameStop now. And then they're also doing their most secret <laughs> company thing that we're talking about. The NFT marketplace. There's also more stuff that it's I It's all speculative. Mentioned. Speculative on, well, I mean, it's finally in writing that it's going to happen this year, so I don't think it's too speculative, but you can speculate on what exactly it'll contain, obviously. There might actually be two marketplaces. I, I believe there might be, like, one for the gaming side and one for the financial sides. Do you think GameStop is going to go into the financial market and become, yeah. like, a financial I I believe GameStop. they will become, like, a bank in some regards. You think, you think GameStop's going to become a bank? Somewhat. Because, remember, most people keep their money, or not most people, sorry, fuck, uh, some people keep their money in as stocks, right? They keep it as their sure. bank. <laughs> GameStop becomes also a stock market. And we'll actually, um, get it, yeah, we'll get a plethora of new games because they're currently doing a hundred million dollar grant for creators. Um, yeah, that's big. Mm, mm, Please, so. God, not a battle royale. That's all I'm asking. I think it's a pretty easy ask, too. $100 million to make something that's not a battle royale. Dude, that's Overwatch all, 2 is going to be a battle royale, for. dude. It's going to be I'm amazing. I'm excited for don't, it. Don't lie. Don't lie to me. I None of you are excited about a battle royale. You, Blizzard. This is going to be ridiculous. I don't want to I don't want to wait year. for... It's going to release this year. It's such crap. How is Apex <laughs> getting a deathmatch mode, and yet I haven't heard anything about Overwatch 2 besides there's test builds around here somewhere? Huh? Huh? What's this crap? I want, well, I want today, some more or was content. It, was it today or yesterday, uh, they just apparently put Overwatch 2 on the Battle.net launcher. But besides that, I guess uh, that goes into another question. Do we know what the next big announcement is that's going to be in that area, Brad? Like, what's the next step? Blockchain gaming. Blockchain Why would gaming, you play a game? Like, imagine uh, teenagers or just kids just like... Why would I play a video game if I can play a different video game and make money playing it? Or, no, actually, no, a really good uh, explanation would be a game that's still hold up to today, like, in terms of even its reputation, I feel like, is RuneScape. Their marketplace and stuff like that. Imagine if you could sell that for real money. I mean, obviously, you can in but very I feel like, yeah, weird ways. I feel ways, like all of this stuff is already, it's already, like, happened. Like, the fact that you can buy a WoW, uh... A WoW subscription. Uh, subscription with WoW money gave WoW money a real life uh, what, value. What would you say? Like value. So it's yeah, so it's like this that's has already been happened that's before. That's not controlling your money. That's just one option for your money. 
It's like having a gift card in a store and you can only buy stuff in that store. No, but you can you can sell your gold in in WoW for real money. People do it all the time. Yeah, through weird websites. Which websites have actually been taken down? By Our, all websites are weird, Brad, until you use them, right? Yeah, but it's not like the official thing that has a nice, seamless way. What NFTs and crypto is doing is to remove the middleman. By becoming a middleman. The middleman is code. Yeah. Rather than having a person, it's code as the middleman. Because everyone can trust code. You read it correctly, you can trust it. It'll only act in that way. I mean, but somebody's writing that code. It's not just writing everyone itself. Everyone can see that code. And you can find who's accountable for the code that you've bought That's if it's fraudulent. Well. Have we not seen what CoffeeZilla has exposed if Ice Poseidon? Recently? Yeah, of course. That's what that's uh, what I get, that's kids. what I'm going back to. Like the the amount of corruption that you see in like the old system as you call it. Like I see I see it uh -huh. the same way in but the But none new of them system. are actually held accountable and put to jail or anything like that. Likewise also the, Neither the in the lights. old system. I think like I think one poor dude went to jail from the the 2008 market crash. Yep. The housing market crash. Was, one dude. Put the blame on him. Yeah. One dude went to jail. Yeah. It's it's So it's the same shit. That's that's going back into like the systematic thing and that would change in a short squeeze slowly because I hope so. currently we have money in people who don't know how to use it morally correctly ethically correctly but imagine if that money goes into correct morally ethical people redditors i love when you put like that yes let's go <laughs> <laughs> but the, the super stonk people it's not just them so many people the whole entire world is watching there's so many people that have gme that have been told to by friends or just seen it online and they're just holding it and they don't even know of the reddit's existence they're just still holding it yeah so, so this might be this might be a, a personal question but are you you're talking about people spending money morally right uh, could you give like an example of what you consider a morally right way to spend your money it's more so one would say that it should happen in the best scenario with everyone spending their money collectively so firstly you can boycott like oil companies coal companies that are actually polluting the planet we're talking about the climate change thing mm -hmm. that's and funny that you bring that up like in, in such a great way because it's like a lot of people think that like cryptocurrencies are everything is like hurting the 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 environment, environment but you're saying now that a lot of them are doing this or they want the switch to happen because they want to put these sort of companies that are actually polluting yeah. the, the the world out of business i th i think that's really funny that's cool well, yeah no so that's what i'm saying they're bashing the technology as it's infantile and the infantile technology had to use a terrible environmental way before but now we are getting carbon neutral technology that fast is fucking coal yeah. carbon neutral yet is fucking oil carbon neutral yet no it'll never be but this technology is already getting to that so how does it get to the point where it's carbon neutral? What's uh, the next step? It is. It already is? The immutable so thing. The, the GameStop going of um, immutable or even liberal. Immutable is, a, is what exactly? A carbon neutral way of producing NFTs or whatever it may be? Yeah. So that's what the next step is, getting to carbon neutral so that way uh, there's no more damage to the environment. They've solved the blockchain trilemma, which has been an issue for the entirety of crypto. Low gas fees, which is the cost of transaction. Scalability, which is the transactions per second. And now, the environmental aspect. Because I know, like, right now, uh, I'm pretty sure recently I read that, like, New York is currently, like, out of electricity to, like, power homes for heat or whatever because oh, yeah. of all the Bitcoin mining, etc. So I thought that was uh, pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, like, New York. Uh, is that, that, was, that, is that really that getting, like, listed as that now? When I was reading, well, it was because they haven't used the their money in for to actually upgrade the infrastructure for the coming winter. Well, that was Taxes. That one, <laughs> that was just Taxes. They got hit by a winter no, storm. No, no, I, I know what you're talking they about. They hit by a winter storm in New right York. Now. Yeah. Because I'm almost certain it's because like we we keep seeing this money not used correctly. They're not even going back into the community of the people, and yeah, that's why you see people their their power shutting down and stuff like that because they don't have the proper infrastructure. Mm. when it's supposed gotcha. to be but they need, never put the money back into the people getting oh man it's, <laughs> it's so amazing it's like such a, a video game challenge in terms of solve the earth <laughs> fix, its problems. fix our carbon footprint collectively because think about it right and we start with crypto we've had in history revolutions 
but we've never had a global revolution. And this one's a peaceful one. To a state, yeah. To a state? I mean, all the companies who, are who going... Who knows exactly what will happen? That's why yeah. I'm only imagining the best scenario. The cryptocurrency wars! There is... I'll be, I'll be 60 years old on a rocking chair with my kid. Let me tell you about the Bitcoin wars of... 2022. We're an Ethereum house, Daniel. You bring Bitcoin in here. <laughs> Your grandmother would have a fit if she were still alive. She took a bullet for me. Back when Ethereum 2.0 first went live. The hedgies ascended on us with pikes, Daniel. Pikes! And you bring Bitcoin in this home? <laughs> Get out! Funny thing with the crypto as well is that even if uh, I don't know much about uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin was the original, right? And that was the infantile yeah. technology that inspired Ethereum. Ethereum. So. And now Ethereum is going to outstrip Bitcoin. That's the idea, is that Ethereum will be the next bi next Bitcoin, essentially. Because Ethereum 2.0 is built on this technology where it's like 99% carbon neutral, et cetera. Ethereum 2.0 is for to Ethereum. Yeah. I was so and scared about that. Because <laughs> I, have, I have like some Ethereum and... Uh, I was like, fuck, do I have to, like, sign something to get it to 2.0 or oh, something? Geez. Like, is it? <laughs> I thought I was going to have to, like, liquidate everything and then go to a whole different platform. It's like, oh, and then I read it. It's like, no, you don't got to do anything. I, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I bet you someone made a shit coin called Ethereum 2.0 and actually made it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Because it's, like, the wild west out there right now. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of that. So, yeah. Invest in Ethereum 2.0. Oh, I can't wait. You just no, literally just wait. You'll, it's out you'll now. Literally Quickly, guys. That's yeah. what we should do. We should make Ethereum 3.0. <laughs> we really just keep throwing we the numbers out there every time it goes down. We're like, come Let's on, make baby. some fucking money, boys. <laughs> that's, that's how you get the audience. Just say it's Ethereum. 4. Someone get me those phase can phase clan guys. I didn't have experience with this shit. I want in. It's not that much, dude. I, I was talking to somebody that knows how much it is to to do a coin with them. It's like two hundred thousand dollars or something to get them to promote That's whatever. That's it. This, this oh, was like damn. deja vu. This is exactly the thought process Ice Poseidon went through, but then actually went through it and scammed his fans. Yeah. So and then he openly way. said, "He openly said, no, I'm not going to give it back. No, I know I can, but yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, said it wasn't a Ponzi scheme, and then literally gave the definition of a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, of a process. Ponzi scheme. <laughs> no, look, see, they give us the money, right? And then they get money from someone else, yeah. and then we get that money to give them back their money, but then we're left with all of this money. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had more water. What are you talking about? Wash down this nonsense. I wish I had more money. <laughs> wish you had more money? Ah, just wait. <laughs> just give it a minute. <laughs> Literally, just wait. <laughs> uh, I think it's a I scary mean, process of, in, like... Right? I think it's, like, the scariest process of, like, um, just learning about this stuff right and like I'm, you're just like your entire world is like now i was so agitated before. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like the most impressive live streamers ever so it's like oh god no oh, no it's, I think it's mostly just like it's mostly just getting to the point in like a podcast where you have all the information that you want to present in a way that's like manageable and then once I you get that all like out of yourself you're just like all right what's left let's just make some let's just make some fun of it like, all right what can we talk oh, so about we should now? probably we if I met a hedge fund manager like... in the street, I would hit him with a lead pipe. Yeah, let's get yeah. It. I know Brad has done that. in the class that he done. It's very visual, like where you've drawn stuff on the uh, the board and stuff to walk people yeah. through. And unfortunately, we couldn't have access to that. While we could have that eventually on the podcast, um, which is like you showing us technology. Yet well, because you're it's not that we don't have the technology. technology. I'm not very much into doing that right now because we have a lot of uh, platforms that are just you audio. You don't alone. have the effort. What do you mean we don't have the effort? No, That's, I just like said Spotify. I could do it. It's just that I don't want to leave the the audio viewers out when we're showing stuff well, on screen or on screen. Fuck the audio viewers! Look at this. Audio why didn't you just oh, show, Why didn't you just show it? Yeah, you just showed it so the audio <laughs> people could have been like. <laughs> it's just silent, and we're here holding up signs about what we're gonna, what we're trying to say to each other. It's like how Tubal's a little shit. I don't know how that has any reference to anything, but I agree. <laughs> Bradley, I will rearrange your facial structure. I will give you a third will... eye. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna make you see better. I'm gonna. <laughs> I will do everything in my power to make people sell GME, so you never see a short squeeze. <laughs> you don't have enough power to make that happen. It's already. Gonna happen. <laughs> you don't know what kind of power. You don't know how viral this podcast is gonna go. <laughs> Trust me. You have no idea. <laughs> I'll have you know we were top 32 for the comedy podcast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What does that mean? 
Out of all the comedy podcasts, top thirty-two out there. in the world. Yeah, on number Spotify, 32. We were number thirty-two. Why is it only thirty-two on podcasts? <laughs> there's only there's not only thirty-two podcasts. We went 50. up from forty-six. <laughs> right. I know. There's at least forty-six there comedy thousands. podcasts. That is so many thousands. <laughs> that I mean, should always just switch the podcast to only GME. <laughs> no. Do you think there's anything you left out? In your explanations. Okay. We didn't exactly... I know this is tough to... Like I said, you have a whole class and, like, thing in mind um, that and you rehearsed. And the unlisted stream because I'm terrified of people just constantly bashing because they don't understand. So when they don't understand, they bash. So are you oh, nervous okay. of keeping that private because you don't want the, I guess, negativity to outweigh the positive response from that? I don't know. I'm just mostly disappointed, to be honest. In, just, in like, responses in general. People are allowed to have doubt, and it doesn't make them dumb. No, it's not you know? doubt. It's just You're worried that if, like, let's say a community. comment that's, that shows doubt <laughs> goes to the top, and then everybody immediately sees that comment, and they're like, yeah, no, I, I don't I, trust it's this. It's hard to explain it, because it's more of a um, uh, subconscious thing. For it's sad to hear that. I mean, I completely understand as, a, I guess, a guy who's made videos and changed up, uh, what, what, what? What do you think I was going to say? Different direction. No, 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 no. I was going to say in responses to negativity and being nervous about, I guess, in this case, putting something that you've already put out uh, into, I guess, a more public oh, viewing area. Oh, I thought area. you were talking about Apex, about you being brought into the video. No, 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 no. I, I guess I was just going to say um, you should just try it. I mean, you have shown, I guess, your, your classes online, and they have gotten good responses, but I guess just see what it's like... Um, it is my new obsession where I'm putting all my energy into researching this stuff and yeah. trying to get better at talking. That's why thank you, Salty, for helping me go onto a thing and talk to people, especially talk to. This is me looking at you, Louis. <laughs> why? What? Just because I disagree with you? <laughs> then we go straight away goes defense. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said you're looking at him. I would get <laughs> defensive. Uh, well, you, yeah, like like you that level of defense was just so funny. I just loved it. I'm not def Okay, well, yes. I am, I am a very defensible <laughs> person, but look, you shouldn't What I'm saying is like you shouldn't be now scared of people. Now go on the offensive. Like yes. You shouldn't be scared of people of me. Like like me that like will try to see the flaws in everything that you're saying because I there have are people like that. Had like little war fuck where a random clip gets taken out of context put on twitter and everyone just hate raids yeah that's a thought that has come to mind one thought that's, of many yeah i hope it happens a thousand times in this video but for two bold what the fuck man <laughs> Sexy, <not doing laughs> i haven't even done anything <laughs> you think, I get, you think i'm gonna turn my eye away from like a thousand people randomly showing up my chat like you support nfts I'm like i don't even know what an nft is man <laughs> but thanks for Blind coming by you. for the stream i like, i'm gonna play like 12 ads you you hold on to those comments and watch these for me would you thanks for the 50 bucks you hate rating I mean, bitches <laughs> <Buck up>. <laughs> <laughs> i might disagree with you on a bunch of stuff but like it doesn't mean that i dislike you as a person i'm just talking you know i feel like maybe you have taken Love that me? because you literally stopped talking to me but you talk to tubold and fish all the fucking time all the time <laughs> really? by yourself really. and you have, talk since i disagreed with you learn. that one day you have never talked to me it was ever it was so, do you want to know what what the last thing brad and i talked about was brad walked up to me or walked well, up to me. Yeah, he dm'd me he now. dm'd me and said like hey watch this video also do you want to see me play this ant game i'm like okay let's what let's see the ant game oh my god and he was playing was such a good game. he was playing like a starcraft game with ants and like he was getting his ass beat by spiders oh, that's 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 what, is that what influenced you to start an ant farm no what influenced me right is that i was taking the trash out and there was a bit of mold and i had a flashback to when i was really young and my ant colony is dying to mold <coughs> because we didn't have knowledge back then of how to take care of ants so now i'm like wait hold up <laughs> Ten is a decade later. Maybe I'll try again with actual information and resources and stuff. Let's see how when, it the, when the world ends. When the world financially ends and Zilbred is sitting upon his giant chair of GME and just ant farms are blocking <laughs> his every fucking. <laughs> I told him before, you just get one entire wall covered with like one of those giant like sand things I'm where ants can to build their tunnels. Genetically modify the ants so they can go into your computer and buy GME without you knowing. <laughs> They're in the servos. And DRS it. <laughs> They're in the servos, baby. Well, I think that's been a, a very interesting way of like thinking about stocks is converting them into NFTs so that way everyone can be held accountable for everything and you can never be. No way. And then we uh, can rug pull it. 
Yeah, and then we can <laughs> rug pull it. And they'll be like, you rug pull us. I'm like, yeah, thanks for the money. <laughs> <laughs> the cookie crumb trail led right to me and my stack I of cash. I still want the Ethereum 3.0. From we should make it, dude. There. I'll copyright yeah. it right now. 100%. I'll get, a- I'll get AJ to mint it. <laughs> yeah, AJ it just goes crazy minting NFTs all the time. <laughs> he took Some a picture of me before trust. I even knew anything, and he immediately turned it into an NFT. There's a picture of me out there, like, getting out of a hot tub. That That's, looks the like picture, shit. The picture behind Fish is minted as an NFT. Which one? The one of Tubal standing there like uh Oh, like really? Bowling. He minted that <laughs> yeah. too? I didn't know that. Yeah. Bro. Tell me this. What benefits does it give you to buy? There's no Tubal benefits. He just no has benefits. them. Wait, did you just ask me what are the benefits of me buying that or an NFT of Tubal? NFT of Tubal. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Because currently with the art ones. Which the, the art isn't like... even on the blockchain. Have you? Uh, yeah. Did you know that? It's so fucking it. no, no, backwards. They can host that for most of them, yeah. But it's it's fucked. Um, it's so stupid. So with uh, the picture ones, the most popular ones, it's not just the, the picture. Body. You get like a membership and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So so it, yeah. it's got a little bit of use case, but it's not as amazing as. It's like what? going to a Supreme meetup. Like I wear a Supreme too, you know. Like. <laughs> 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 you know how with the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, you can buy that, I guess, and trade it, and you have the card, right? Or you Hearthstone. can mint Yugi's dad on the blockchain. I love that meme. Grandpa. I love that meme so much. He'll <laughs> uh, be there for eternity. Imagine that, though. Like, you buy all those Hearthstone cards, but you don't actually own them. That's I right. think it'll be a cool step into into uh, the future of gaming. They love to coin the term metaverse. Yeah, the Zuck. The yeah, Zuck loves uh, his metaverse stuff. They did that Looks purely. terrible, by the way. They that was that so bad. Who only because they're <laughs> terrified. They want to stay relevant or like be like, oh, whenever metaverse is mentioned, you think of Facebook. 100% why they did it. Like, it's... It's yeah, But they're only doing, like, the story. VR space. When... It's just mm. gonna be VR chat. Just bigger. Should we go... Yeah, should we go back to the importance of one singular GME shares that people actually understand and actually will want to do more research and actually then... I think we should go back to the Apex videos. <laughs> I didn't even remember the fact that like <laughs> <I'm sorry. GME> is... <laughs> the face Brad just made. <laughs> we, we kind of were all all over the place in terms of that, so I guess we should go back to one uh, not jaw dropping, but something that grabs somebody's attention to want to. Yeah. I guess. Why why is GME important, Brad? I'm yeah. I'm I'm pitching. Imagine me on the mound of a baseball field. This is the elevator. And here's pitch. the question: Why is GME important? Protect yourself from hyperinflation. Make. Lifetime worth of revenue. And here's me signing up to the plate as well. And why is that? <laughs> <laughs> the incredible amount of short interest and then catalysts that can force the shorts to close their positions. Forcing the stock of GME to be worth whatever amount of money you could feasibly sell it for. Infinite. It's possible for the infinite, but like in theory, like literally, if, if there was two people, right? It's me versus Salty. Sal- Salty's a terrible fucking naked short seller, right? Look at this little prick. Scum um, of the earth. Absolute prick. Just <laughs> destroying <laughs> companies and innovations. Oh my god. And also delaying cancer research by decades. Um, Insane. Little... Look at him. Just, what a monster. Can we just take a moment there. to look at this monster? Oh my god. <laughs> just, see, he wants you to think that. Okay. <laughs> Strange that they don't teach you any economic type of stuff in high school in terms of this. Strange that they don't I didn't tell you I learned. the fraudulent part of it. As well, I, I learned, I learned anything about economics in high school. To, to try and bash mm-hmm. crypto and NFT thank you, Mr. Moritz. Something that in, uh, my high school teacher <laughs> literally threatens. He taught he system. in a in a accounting class or sorry an economics class he class? Uh, economics he threw away the the textbook he made us all throw it away and then he just taught us about stocks and how to invest and how to what's what's the good stuff what's the bad stuff he let us stay after class like during our lunch period and just talk to him about. What we thought was weird and clarified. It was a super amazing class. So, does that mean yield DRS? Do you, no, I don't. I don't believe in what you believe in. But I, I respect you but it's as a person. Mathematics. There's a lot of mathematics. You know, two plus two equals banana somewhere. I actually thought you were understanding a bit more. That's fair enough. Well, you say I'm not understanding because I don't agree with you. Yeah. 
It's like the equivalent of uh, inventing maths and stuff like that and going one plus one equals two and you go, no, it's not. It's fucking three. Brad, this is this is something that might turn people off in your explanations. Is the way you just I like doing that. that. Like, oh, it's just. Uh... No, if they don't agree with you and then you say, well, why can't you agree? Well, with, you're with dumb. Math? Yeah, you're dumb. Because I remember when Brad did actually explain this to me for the first time, he just threw a whole waterfall yeah. of mean yeah. things at me. When it's, I was trying to like, understand it, he does that no matter what. Videos? Though I'm gonna be honest I just go with you. like I go like fucking salty, you're missing those shots, you dumb bastard. Maybe maybe you're just mean, Brad. <laughs> Sorry, it's just just saying I can get my point across without it's, calling it's somebody just, dumb. It just sucks that the truth hurts. No, <laughs> what that I what that I'm dumb? <laughs> no, that you missed the shots when I was saying oh, that. Okay. Fish is for some reason not good at Apex. He's great. He's good at Valorant. He's great at he's great he's at not, uh, no, no, great no, he's really good at Apex with um, Lucio. So there's a yeah, he's good. He's good. At, he's good at Overwatch with Lucio. He goes to Valorant. He pulls off the stupidest shots I've ever seen in my entire life with his shaky can, hands. No, I, meant, I meant I meant Lucio and Apex. Can we ask you? Can we ask you about that? Um, you said that you're focusing a lot of your time into this rather than I guess your YouTube channel. What is your opinion on making videos right now at the moment, putting out content or? any of that like I really video do want to wise. when the when the narrative actually shifts a bit differently for the public like what make videos really about this topic so <clears throat> everything make videos in general when people are less skeptical so such as i out you can do this and that do videos and this and that do videos on the new nft type of games squeeze can happen make a lot of money you can do any types of videos you want at that point so do you have like no desire to play apex or anything like that like right now, until the there's new season comes out, etc. Like new content, new content. <laughs> something new to do. What a mood! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> playing what a playing mood. Apex with Brad though is insane. <laughs> it's like playing fast, Apex man. on easy mode. Brad is a great shot caller. If you listen to him, it usually goes right. It's insane. You just win every single time. Yeah. The amount it's of crazy. ideas you have to come up with every fucking day for fucking Apex and stuff. You don't know the pain I went through in Sea of Thieves. It's even harder. And I did it, and it was so much fun, and then... That would make so Sea of Thieves really fucking fun. If you could if you could do, like, uh, all of the story mode shit that nobody wants to do, but, like, if it translated into real money, that'd be sick. That's sea of Thieves would actually be, like, super cool if you could get a chest and actually be worth $5. You'd be like, fine. Yeah, right. that would be <laughs> so that's, sick, dude. That's the level of gaming that can happen. When I play when I play poker against people, I don't even look at the cards. I say all in. <laughs> Every single time I'm just I did all that in. in Vegas. I did that in Vegas once. I literally was at a poker you table. Been, I didn't you flip my cards and I went, so I'm many. all in. <laughs> did you win? And then everybody was like, What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> they all had to flop or like some dude with a pair of A's just like, Yeah, sure, all right. <laughs> uh, if you want that analogy by the way, uh, with GameStop, we have the Royal Flush. The individual sure. investors have the royal flush. I'm just, I'm just like saying, uh, all right, keep going, keep, keep uh, digging your grave deeper. I'm not digging my grave, Brad. It's, no, not you, not you. I'm literally... the fucking uh, short shorters. Like, oh, shorters oh, yeah, yeah, oh my god, yeah. no. <laughs> but what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that look, I can be as skeptical as I want because through time and history, no one in ever has been able to tell like. Say this stock is going to go up this day. This stock is going to go down. It's always just a gamble. There's, there's, yes, there is mathematics Except behind it. There the are statistics. Price. There is stuff like that. But you, you, no one can guess anything. And when, you, especially for me, when somebody sounds as sure of something like you do with this, I immediately, it, my brain is like, no, I am not going to be that. Like I'm not going to. And I'm sure a lot of people are. It just, it just puts me off. You know. That's the funny thing as well. It actually, it, I assume it puts you off entirely to do research on it. Just entirely. Just no, like, I do research on it. No, I'm oh, uh, sorry. That was an assumption. <laughs> Brad, I research more than fucking both of these guys, like uh, on this for this video. Uh, you can ask them. I was fucking like freaking out about this fucking podcast for like two weeks. I was like, I gotta do research and research. And I talked to so many fucking people that are investing in stocks and do uh, day trading and shit like that and, and everything. That you're wrong. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they know. Like, I did the same, you know, I went on the same reddits that you went. I went on Super Stonk. I read a bunch of shit. And you took it differently. Yeah. Yeah. That's just how it works. 
I think at this point, it's uh, safe to say that, like, no one here is a financial advisor. Please make sure you infa- inform yourself of your own decisions, whether it be well, on Brad's camp or Louis' camp. Financial advisors, because the financial Louis advisors camp. won't tell you if there's an oncoming market crash and hyperinflation. <laughs> if it occurs, the end of the world. Not yeah. the end of the world. It's more like ripping off a bandaid. To make the end system. of the bandaid. <laughs> bandaid. <laughs> That's a good company. <laughs> want to make that they basically branded themselves into what it is. You just call is anything actually, a band aid. Yeah. Is that actually like the? A it's company? just a brand name. No way. Really? Band aid is just a brand. Yeah. I thought band aids were literally those things. It's just it's medical band-aid. tape. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're fucking with me. There's no way I'm not it's medical tape. There you no, like, no, I've definitely seen multiple brands of band aids. No, yeah. band aid is a brand. Is it with a dash Wait. in it? Is that how they get away with yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. There's no dash. I kind of want to go back to that. Why do they think I'm wrong? Why do they think you're wrong? Yeah. Why do they think you're wrong? Because they are under the assumption that I am as well, that most hedge funds I've already gotten out. There's not a lot of shorts happening, the, especially the long sec- term. There might the be some short term. What? The SEC report, the SEC report saying that they haven't gotten out. Like you've said, a lot of things are fraudulent. Trust, trust the people that I trust. You trust the people that you trust. That's literally it. it doesn't make me dumb. It doesn't make you dumb. How about this? The risk reward is insane. Let me tell you that. Right. Yeah, of course. So, so it's betting on black when you, the Louis, entire wheel is red except for one spot. Share, so <laughs> I have one share. I've had I one share my, since I you told my, me to buy it. You DRS? I don't know what. No, I just it's you go they're sitting there. No, I did. Uh, yeah, I did. I switched it over to Fidelity when you when you reamed Fide- me for yeah, having yeah, 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 Robin yeah. Hood. Get off. <laughs> um, you fucking like for yeah, two hours. Like, fair, you Robin need to tell everyone now. Bye, bud. Robin Hood took away the buy. Bud. I would trust them either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, straight well, up, that's that I know for a fact actually happened, and I ain't trust. I'm anyone also in a lot take of my ability away from me. That sucks. Yeah. Should, I'm also in a lot of ETF investments. I have like a lot of investment stuff. Yeah, I can throw away a hundred dollars on a fucking. It's not a cancer. It's just, it's like the, the S and P five hundred, but for tech companies. Oh, S and P five hundred. Oh man. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll just say it like that, and I won't get into detail. It's it seems more. Uh, obvious. You know, it's funny. My my buddy really. Uh, so he day trades. My buddy, um, and he actually uh, does day trading on GME a lot. He's seen a lot of returns. What off a little of shit. day trading. I'll say that. To <laughs> <laughs> but. Hopefully. He, well, he does he mainly stopped. options options trading. Oh, no. <laughs> Brad has the so short, many opinions short on these words. The it's super like short-term, like me. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> He's in and out. Louie and Brad are just having like this war of words at the moment. I'm just like, yeah. That's, no, that's man, exactly what him. I expected when I came to the stream. <laughs> but I don't even know for which either. I'm just like, yeah, But that's him. why you don't talk to him anymore. <laughs> on both sides. Yeah, Scary. get him. <laughs> Day trade the fuck out of him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the minute, yeah. I Where you might going, think I'm dumb, I, I think you're no, very no. smart, Brad. Like, I, for real. I, have you gotten any responses from your viewers that you've given classes to about, like, I guess, immediate outcomes or any changes? That they've all lost money because the stock is down. Look at that turn of that. I like that. I'm not just saying. It's true. It's fact. The stock do, went down. Do you know how the stock goes down? <laughs> Naked short selling? Through the, people the, the, the stock? magic of the financial system, dude. Stocks. Stocks. They go up and down. And the perceived value. It's just like crypto, no, just like NFTs. 90 to 95% of the retails go through dark pools. So therefore their prices don't have an... No, their buyers don't have an effect on the price. So therefore the hedge funds are able to manipulate the price. But they're not able to manipulate it completely, completely. Otherwise they would have brought the stock down to zero. Yeah. Caught them by the but balls. It is a fact that the stock has gone down. And until it goes yeah, up, if you, you leave, won't, you if won't you leave it money. just like that... That it goes down. You got to give the reason, the actual factual reason of why it's going down. It's just not just because it's oh this and that. It's the goddamn manipulation behind it. There has been no actual price discovery on the stock market ever, like actual price discovery. Normal Isn't market. because we're not living in like... actual fucking. If we were in normal, m- if we were like normally basing our our stock price on what the company is doing, block or uh, fucking GameStop would be at zero, if close to it. It's maybe worth like twenty dollars a stock. In, in real, <laughs> sorry, dude. Sorry, it's just, it's again, just so funny. you're saying on speculative, like, oh, they've made a bunch of announcements about NFTs and blah 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 blah. 
They haven't done anything different in 10 years. It's the still a brick itself. and mortar shop where you go buy and sell and oh trade God. games. Is it not? You are still on that narrative. That's fair enough. Um, stock what? should be roughly trading at thousands of dollars right now. Like I said, there's more shares than exist. So, if those I'm not talking about the financial. Price. I'm talking about the just the actual valuation of the stock. Not considering all of the fraudulent stuff. Not talking about any of the the you know uh, Wall Street mumbo jumbo. It's I said that the, it's a brick and mortar. When you go to a GameStop, it's an e-commerce store. Yes, and a brick and, and mortar. And it's nobody is renting games on fucking GameStop. But what, renting? Whatever you were saying, buying like everybody that is a PC gamer is on Steam or Epic or Blizzard or whatever. There is a, have a negligible of amount of people. To the GameStop stores. Depending on special that releases, I imagine that's probably a thing. That, not that actual pandemic. manipulation onto you to think that is exactly what they want you to think. I know that the prices the prices skyrocketed you. last year of the stock during a pandemic when all the fucking malls were closed. The brick and mortar shops weren't even open. They're open now. But you're and it's down. <laughs> the stock is down now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's only up ten percent or three percent of what it was last year when it was a booming. Like, yeah, because of the market manipulation. Okay, uh, we're we're just not we're not lining I know, up it's here. A circle. Yeah, yeah. But I am works. trying to make it as basic as possible. One plus one equals two. Fucking it, everything <laughs> that is it, GameStop is a brick and mortar fucking place. Where you go e and so buy games. Order stuff online. I guess, it's but the nobody. Next that regard. I, I, I like want to go. I don't know if I could fact my fact check myself because this isn't fucking Joe Rogan. But I promise you that is negligible. Also, partner of deliver. I mean, um, uh, DoorDash to get same day deliveries as well. No, same. When did they do that? Three hours. Ages ago. Just wasn't mentioned to the media. But ages ago, when the company was doing its transformation to the e-commerce. So, last Either year. Either I'm just saying. You think that they've done absolutely nothing? They have announced and have been doing a lot of things back, like you're saying, in the back door, uh, the secret... And at the front. I could get What's the exact... one thing? I said the whole distribution centers that have been made, the... But this is like nothing new. Every, 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 every... It's like Disney releasing that. Disney Plus. Like The best customer service. Does GameStop have the best customer service? No when shit. I used to go into GameStop, I could tell you exactly what happened. The person behind the when? counter would look at me, stare me dead in <laughs> my 12-year-old eyes, I'm and say, your game is blind. worth nothing. <laughs> 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 your game ain't okay worth shit. Are you, are you okay after that? No, I was actually quite scarred. And quite frankly, when you told me to buy GME stocks, I thought back to that moment and said, I don't know if I trust that guy. Yeah. The moment you brought it up, <laughs> I, like I immediately that. thought of my GameCube that was only supposedly worth $10 if I wanted to give yeah, it Yeah, exactly. It's horse crap is what it is. Oh, but if you want it to be in your GameStop gift card, well, we'll bump it up to 15 It's like, how about you just slap me? How about that? Huh? Why don't you just though. slap me? <laughs> It you is think it's under new leadership to, uh, that was even able to compete against Amazon. So much I don't money. think anyone's competing against Mike or Amazon. Well, I'm just saying, like I, I could go to, I could go to Amazon and get literally anything. Amazon itself is able to work with the hedge funds to destroy their competition through the fraudulent stock market as well. It does seem like something Jeff Bezos would do. That dude does look more yeah. and more like Lex Luthor every single day. I actually saw an article pop up on my phone where they like dismantling some bridge in uh, some Danish bridge, just so his super yacht could like leave the harbor and go out to sea, and then they could remantle it. Like that is the most like super, super villain thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Destroy so the super it. yacht can leave. Take it out of my sight. <laughs> Mr. Bezos, I'm afraid that if you build your super yacht here, it'll never reach the ocean. Well, talk about that later. Build my yacht. We'll get rid of That's that bridge. That's a future we'll but problem. Bezos, should you uh, help the people? Never. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> should you uh, treat your employees? Destroy the bridge. Get rid of traditional right. things. And you know what? Set fire to Notre Dame again. No I'll lunches. rebuild it better. <laughs> Brad, you were uh, talking about how you were nervous going into this. I, I was too, because 
After all the bashing, it's like PTSD if I ask a dumb question. What a stupid fucking question, fish. You're oh, salty. For that. Hey, just trying to help you. <laughs> well, I mean, either way, this is, uh, I think, good practice for It's an your exhausting one. Videos, I assume right? in your other streams you don't get exhausted after. I'm actually not exhausted right now. I'm... Well, you are I've the never one been more fired up. To be yeah, honest, <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, keep going. What else do you no, want to I, say, Mister Fire? That, Let's go. You have you have my thoughts on it. I don't have any muscles. No, I do. Don't. I don't. You... <laughs> I haven't spec'd into. You haven't spec'd into strength. <laughs> I have speculative strength. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely stronger. I could probably take Louis. Honestly, if I'm, no, if I'm thinking about it, I could probably no. take Louis. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. <laughs> yes, I can probably we agree on something. <laughs> I, mean, I could find the common right? ground. It's just yeah, I, don't know, man. I, I could take Louis. Honestly, I beat him uh, you know, today like, in CS:GO. Believe you? it or not, it's pretty crazy. Because like me, yeah, yeah like I know how to throw you. a punch. Duh. Just bring out a fucking. I sit gun. on you. The only way you're gonna able to do it is with a gun. Louis, you'd have to catch me first. I'm too quick, narrow, and agile. I'm fast as well. I'm like a, I'm like a flying fish. I fly out of the water, slap you in the face, and I'm gone. <laughs> is your is you your channel just sort of like a like on like, it's sort of it's almost like an autopilot. Is that kind of like how you feel like you could just put out whatever video and it'll My do what it does? My channel is about like... what I want to do. People say you can't do this new stuff. You're a gaming channel. It's like it's always been me. It's just that I've been extremely obsessed about video games. But you love gaming still, right? Like I would assume. Yeah, yeah. So That's you're not I'll gonna stop putting out gaming content. Yeah. Are you saying like doing so much videos does it eventually get to autopilot? It's like Well no, like even get... now, like you can take you can t when was the last video that you dropped, like Apex? Like a month ago, right? Or something like that? Or maybe like fourteen days a hmm? month ago? Was it like a month? But like does that scare you? Like I'm saying, dropping I'm saying out... it wasn't a month ago, it was like a lot of months ago. Oh two, yeah, two see months, so like maybe what Fi I think what Fish is asking is like, does that scare you? Like, do you have like a game plan to reintroduce gaming into your channel or to reignite like your fans into you know the Apex or whatever? I, I game said you want it to in do? my ominous video of uh, this is not Apex Legends, um, but yeah. it would this whole thing will just spark so much into me when it happens. It's something you're very I'm already passionate getting about. ready to actually prepare for that as well, since it pisses me off. There is. No other, like, big YouTubers or anything like that, big influencers at any point, talking about this that weren't into stocks already. There'll be a lot of people that will be like, thank you for literally fucking doing that, and now help other people. You know, with the money that you make, you'll be able to help your communities and stuff during this financial crisis. And I think it's really important to get the message out there, but mm, I don't see it enough. So you think that's like <laughs> I the see best? Not to have any thought on it. That's like the best course of action is to just inform others of this. Yeah, right I, now? I don't like, I don't get how people are so hyped for a new video, and then when I bring out something that actually impacts them, they don't care. It's well, some people see YouTube as entertainment. You know, you I'm not. Sometimes, yeah, I go onto YouTube like wanting to learn something or wanting to to figure something out, but there are other times where I just want to watch. The funniest people getting hit in the nuts. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. not every day do I want to learn something. No, that's, that's when, fair enough. And then when the market crash actually comes, you'll be like, oh. Dude, uh, when the market crash, I'm still going to be wanting to do the same thing. I'll just have less money. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that, that I'm still going to want to find people. I'm still going to find people getting hit in the nuts. Clarity. Funny. It's Either way, it's, it. it's extremely, like... This is the one chance... Humanity has got to actually combat climate change as well. Ocean acidification, biodiversity collapse, everything. So, I'm going to do my best efforts, lacked, like, even if it's lackluster at the moment, uh, to, to try something. It'll be more in full force uh, when it actually happens, because then I'll have actually the power and influence to do so. But the whole thing could not be achieved if it was just one person. That's yeah. why it's beautiful that there's so many people come together for this. To, to realize and call the entire stock market out as bullshit. It's fraudulent. And then maybe if, if, if things do go exactly the way you said and I am I have the poop on my face, I will personally fly you out to where I live so you can slap me in the face. <laughs> <live>. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on today's episode, Brad. 
And I hope that you and Louis oh, can right, mend yeah, your friendship you. after all of this. Never. And that the, It'll never the happen. The apex season it's, goes it's more, well. No, it, it's more it's just, beyond, just going on to more people repair. to tell about it and, and look at Louis being like, ah. All right, yes. And to the viewers, thank you all for viewing or listening or however you intook this podcast. We will talk to you guys next week. Thank you so much for viewing and listening. Bye. Catch you later.